Thanks. Thanks for the gift, Paddy. Yeah. Take one. Christmas edition. How are you doing, Brian King, UK Flooring TV? Uh, today we're over in Wolverhampton at MN Floor Training Limited. Uh, with, we've got a special guest today, which is Paddy McNicholas. All right, Paddy. Right. We've also got UK Carpet Fit. Oh, sorry. Former. No, we've not. Uh, we've got our very own Dan Jones. How are you doing, yeah, Dan? I'm fine. Cheers. <laughs> uh, it's been about a month and a half, really, Dan. We've been busy. Yeah. So uh, this is the last one before, well, last, last one. one of the year. Yeah. yeah. So we've got we've got a bit to talk about today anyway, haven't we? So what, what have we got coming up? We've got um, pilot for the faster fitter, which the bay's behind us. Fastest fitter of the West. There is, I've had a I've had a few messages and phone calls about it, but uh, it, it, it's just a bit of fun, and there's going to be standards, so it, it's going to be. You can't come in and just do a bodge job. It's got to be acceptable in someone's house because. Yeah, that's there's what, rules. That's what it's all about. And, yeah, it's yeah. got to be done yeah. bad British yeah. standards. But it is but. a bit of fun, but. There's a serious aspect to it as well. Yeah, and uh, anybody who wants to take part, more than welcome, and there'll be some prizes at the end of the year. I think we're going to run it every every uh, round up for the year. And then. Yeah, we'll we'll work it as it as it goes. We'll see what happens. I reckon. Paddy's had a good boy. Yeah. He got disqualified. Do I get a booby prize for fitting the carpet upside down? You go on the cowboy list. Okay. <laughs> Yeehaw. We've got the hat for you. <laughs> also, we've uh, we've done the draw for the Invisisima giveaway what uh, Dan Evans give us to give away cheers Dan, cheers, Dan. Well, so we'll uh, we'll do the draw on that later on uh, what so since the last time we met Dan have you seen anything what's caught your eye yeah I have uh, I have to keep saying Dean White don't I because he keeps dropping his jobs out so he's good though to have I, I saw Dean White come up from being uh, a young lad like just a, a, a beginner fitter and uh, I've I've kind of watched him progress. He went on. I think he went floor skills, did a few training courses, and he just keeps progressing and progressing. He's knocking out some really good work. He does some really nice. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does yeah. I think he's got a small business. What him and I think it's Claire, his wife, runs. He's confident in what he's doing, so he's pushing that aspect of his business, isn't he? Yeah, and like I said, the work just keeps getting better and better. So. Fair play to you. It's this good one's to, good to do. The occasional design job, you know, it sort of sets you apart from your competition. Yeah. You know, good, good portfolio is all straight line like everyone else. Yeah. You're uh, a needle in the haystack, but when you start pulling out, you know, design jobs and adding quirky little. Yeah, he seems to be doing a lot of bespoke stuff, mm. which is good. And I think he's well, he is, he's instructing at Floor Skills now. He's doing a bit there, so one to watch out for, really, Dean. Mm. Well, I uh, I've seen uh, Sam Sanders again, I know I keep pulling his name out, but uh, absolutely cracking staircase with, with the bend, it, his wife's done the binding again. Yeah, it's a full package isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Another one, D, uh, uh, Sam, he's an, another instructor, but he just keeps producing cracking work, especially with the naturals and, and runners. He was like in the that. final, wasn't he, for the fitter of the year this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. the one that did the Queen's Ad. Yeah, I met him at Harrogate. He's good nice guy, it's really nice Harry. guy, Sam. So. So, have you, you seen Ike Yeah, I've seen there's been some really good work. Um, I think the standard of fitting is dramatically increasing, to be quite honest with yeah. you, um, across the board. Obviously, with uh, the exposure people get online, uh, it shows people how you can progress and you can get better yeah. and um, gives other people a bit of a kick up the backside maybe to do a little bit more in the competition. Um, we have seen some great work knocking about recently. I've seen um, Travis has done a really nice, Travis is always doing nice motifs and artwork um, over in America. He's done a nice uh, Christmas themed piece and then you've got uh, Paul from PDM Floors in Doncaster. He's knocking out amazing work all the time. Um, he did a really nice uh, flight of stairs with a bit of a feature in the middle on the, yeah, I saw that. On the half yeah. landing. That looked lovely. Uh, I've seen uh, Craig Jays. Uh, is, that, is that a familiar, na familiar name to you? Yeah. I remember uh, Craig a couple of years ago. He was dead anti uh, training centre, anti NICF. Uh, but all of a sudden, he, he's kind of ch turned round and He's doing everything. I don't know whether he's yeah. been on any training courses, but he's doing everything by the book. Uh, this prep work here is unbelievable. Uh, he's, the, the winders gripping the sides. Uh, and then uh, yesterday, he's done this hand-sewn hand -sewn bullnose yeah. stairs. So yeah, yeah. Right. For me, a hand-sewn bullnose is one of the nicest things you can do in flooring. When it's seamless and it's just yeah. perfect, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'd say that as well, 
they are difficult to do. You, if you want to get one that's totally invisible, they are hard to do, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and that, again, is the same as doing your parquetry work. It gives you a photograph to put online, boost your profile. It shows what you can do, although you're not doing it every day of the week. I've got, I don't know any of these people either. I've got Ian Hall. Uh, I saw a nice loop pile carpet that he'd done. Is that the Strat one, the yeah? Striped yeah. runner, and it, um, he'd mitered it into the landing. Bob on that job was. Is that nice. the one at the top of the stairs where yeah. it goes in off the top? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The top uh, yeah and he's got some mitres on the, the quarter landings as well, hasn't he? Yeah, tidy job. Stuck Very out nice. that did. Uh, another one for me is Alan Hibbert. Uh, Alan's been in the game for years. He, he was in the uh, Fitter of the Year competitions way back in the 90s. Uh, he's quite local to me, Alan. He, he's actually done a couple of jobs for me, but he's done this uh, velvet uh, cracking work. Alan's a cracking fitter. Nice guy as well. So uh, that, that impressed me. Another one I seen was uh, Mike Smith in Witness. He had. Um, I think he used up different materials and different manufacturers. Three products, products. I think, was it three products? Yeah, herring bone. A bit of a different size herringbone job. Um, again, it's different. Yeah, I think stood, it stood really out. Cool. Didn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. cool. Was it Mike Smith or <coughs> Phil McCracken? Which profile did well, he put on? Well, I believe it was Mike Smith. But right. <laughs> he's been quiet lately, Mike, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. busy fitting yeah. floors in his room. <laughs> Christmas. Nice guy, Mike. I've, I did an interview with him a couple of years ago. Really nice bloke. He has I've a never met him. He seems, he is, he is. seems like he's got a good sense of humour as well, which goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if he's from up Widnes way, Liverpool way, they're all pretty humorous up there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I have a course, if I have scouses in, you know it's going to be a good week because they're all... It's going to be a lively yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've got Henry Roger. This was a big piece of carpet he was doing in the hotel. It was laid out up the carpet. Oh, the map of Britain. He had the map yeah. of Britain on it. Yeah, that was a nice piece of carpet. I haven't seen the final install. No doubt it'll be around there. We'll have a look for that. But yeah, looked like a, a bit of work going on there. Would that that have been made specifically? I don't know whether it was printed or woven. I would have thought it might have been woven, but they can do some shit up printing nowadays, can't they? So it could be a print. Yeah. I hope I hope I see the finished installation because yeah. that carpet did look quite yeah, impressive. Tidy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasted on a car park, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, have, have you seen anything else? I, I've been down to Carpet Edge in UK, uh, David and Danielle. I took some banding down there. Uh, had a cup of tea with Dave, showed me around. Nice, Absolutely nice cracking guy. setup. Uh, they've, they're expanding to next door yeah, as well. Yeah, he can do massive rugs as well, can't he? Yeah, um, really, uh, over in uh, Rainford. Actually, it's only about four miles away from me. Oh, is it? So, yeah, I took uh, took some banding over. Absolutely brilliant do some setup. Nice work, don't they? Yeah, That's and he's got he's got a fetish for wool because he's this, this just got shelves of hundreds and hundreds of creels of wool. He's oh, got, he's got the colour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. you know what I mean. Every <laughs> colour, every shade under the sun. He's got it. Yeah, I worship him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he's uh, he's into the flat weave as well, then. Yeah, he does a he bit does, of flat yeah, weave, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He doesn't do much uh, like tufted carpet anymore. He, he, he works in works in the shop banding, and then he does a couple of days a week flat weave. I mean, so. the run, the runners are quite big nowadays, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I, I sew the tape on, um, and I've just had some new samples of Jasper Jasper woven. Uh, they use recycled materials. They got a lovely range, nice they, stuff, quality stuff. They keep popping up as well off the loom. Yeah, off the, the loom. You see a lot of their stuff around, don't you? Uh, Paul, yeah. I, I met him briefly at Harrogate. Uh, you know nice Paul, chap, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Binding seems to be really kicking off at yeah. the minute. Everyone seems to be doing it and putting yeah, pictures you, online. You it it's the new sort of fashion, isn't it? I suppose. The runners, runners in general. Yeah. In, runners in general. Generally, the, yeah. The, really popular. I'm doing quite. I've done more this year than I've than I've ever done, to be honest. I, I'm enjoying sewing on the tape as well. So it's yeah. I like that aspect of it. I don't, I, the fitting's all right, but I quite enjoy uh, sewing the tape on. <laughs> Are you doing more uh, cotton binding than to, whipping? Yeah, so. cotton binding's coming through now. Uh, I do whipping. Whipping's an everyday thing, but the, the cotton binding is what I want to do more of. And uh, this last week, jobs have come through. I've got some work from shops and that now. So shops are binding. Look for us. <laughs> Little plug. 
Uh, also the Carpet Museum over in Kidderminster, uh, they're appealing for donations because uh, with the increase in, uh, <laughs> in the electricity and, and heating, uh, they're, they're struggling and there was talk of it, it may close, which would be a real shame to see yeah, the Carpet yeah, Museum. Yeah. So if you so. can support that museum, if you're a company. Yeah, um, manufacturers, get yeah, your hands in Yeah, your if you can get behind it, once it's gone, it's gone. We need to keep these things, don't we? We should go down there and do some bit of filming and have a look. I'd love to go down there, I've never been, you've been, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they say that you can use it, they've got a meeting room there, you can use it for meetings. So yeah. They do offer quite a few things, so uh, if you've got a meeting planned, you could have it in there. In yeah. the museum, so yeah, yeah, keep it going, donate. And ICF's uh, donating a lump sum, a big yeah, lump we're sum, gonna, so yeah, do something. Uh, any, anybody who wants to donate, like I said, it'd be a shit shame to see that. They all volunteer as well, yeah, it's all volunteer, yeah. all yeah. volunteer, yeah. yeah. I'll chuck a few quid in, yeah. good lad, Barry. Cheers, Paddy. You're gonna match it, bro, yeah. Uh, why do you not give us that giveaway? <laughs> We'll try it. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be on the way back up the M6 in that if you carry on. <laughs> Don't blink, it'll be gone. <laughs> Have you heard that's bad, eh? You got It'll be a right? milkshake later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I did want to highlight today was, um, I always sort of go on about it, is mental health in the, in the industry and in trades in general. Obviously it's Christmas time, you know, it's a great time of year for a lot of people. For some people it's the worst time of year, you know, not everyone's got friends and family about. People have got issues going on, financial issues, work issues, life issues. Yeah. Um, don't suffer alone, yeah, there's people out there that want to help you. Don't hide it behind your smile. Yeah, yeah, reach out to people, people want to help you. Um, yeah. There's no there's no shame in asking for a bit of help. Everyone has highs and lows in yeah. life. And this time of year, you know, for a lot of people this is the high point for Christmas. Mm -hmm. But for others, this is the real the Low lowest point. point of the year where they're by themselves, they've got yeah. issues going on, you know, some people <coughs> can't see their kids or whatever. So yeah, reach out to people, people want to help you. Um, we we did we did something not long back on this and uh, uh, I, contact, I contacted Mind and, and they've volunteered to be the go-to uh, place for floor layers. Okay. So anybody anybody in the flooring industry, uh, get in touch with Mind if you need something to talk to or any help. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're free of charge. Yeah. So Or just anyone else in the trade or just, just anyone, ask. You won't get it if you don't ask. Yeah, Give me well. your ring, I'll bore you death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's a big thing at the minute. There's more and more people take, taking their own I've known lives. two it's... people who've taken their own lives this year. There was a floor layer not far from me who last Christmas unfortunately took his own life as well and left missus and kids behind you. It's heartbreaking. Um, reach out to people. Yeah. The thing, the worrying thing is that these people are getting younger and younger. Mm. There's, there's, one, there's one from Wigan not long back here. I think he was 14. And he, he killed 14. 14 years old, yeah. Uh, he took his own life, and like I said, it's just getting younger and younger. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. But yeah, there's people out there to help you, reach out to people. Um, well, Brian, he'll look yeah. after the ring, Brian. Yeah. He'll buy you a pint with real money. There you are, will yeah. <laughs> right then. Right, training centres. Uh, I'll start us off with the floor skills. Uh, floor, sk the floor skills have uh, bought, well, they've, they've got next door and they're knocking through. I've been round and had a look. Uh, was it that? Yeah, I popped in for a cup of tea, it's massive, so he's doubled in size. As though um, they need more room anyway. Yeah, I know, he's got plenty big, of space. It's big, it's big anyway, isn't it? He's got plenty of space, um, but yeah, it seems like he's got a nice thing going on there. Uh, it was open to open in January, but I think there's been a, just a couple of delays. So it, it, I've spoke to Matt this morning, it's nearly ready, so I think it'll be like more February. It'll be open. They're having it fully decorated throughout uh, both sides, so that'll be interesting to see what it's like. Uh, the courses in January they've got coming up. They've got a commercial vinyl, 16th to the 18th. Carpet level one and two, 17th to the 20th. Bullnose one day course, uh, that's the 20th of January. A sand and seal course, 1st to the 3rd of February, and uh, they've got apprenticeships throughout January. I think they're quite busy with apprentices as well. They do quite a lot of apprenticeships over there, don't they? Yeah. Uh, fitter, Dan? Yep. So we've got the Flooring Industry Training Association. We've got the Alternative Flooring's Natural Course. That's January the 5th to the 6th. We've got the Basic Carpet Course. That's the 9th to the 12th. We've got the Bespoke and Advanced Carpet Course, 9th to the 12th. Uh, and we've got Estimating and Planning. That's the 10th to the 11th of Jan. Commercial vinyl is the 16th to the 19th 
and they have apprenticeships from 23rd to 27th. Also, they've got the intermediate carpet course and that runs from the 30th of Jan to the 2nd of February. Also fitter, uh, some fitter instructors will be heading over to Belgium to spend some time with Berry Allock, who is a fitter sponsor in January. This will be to see the newly opened academy and some CPD for instructors. Also, the CFA, Contract Flow and, Flo Contract Flow and Association, Apprentice of the Year competition will be open for 2023 on the 3rd of January with a prize pool of £7,000 and £1,000 in cash. The competition is open to all floor and apprentices. Employers do not have to be CFA members to enter. That's good. Uh, what's that? What's going on? What's happening here? MM Floor Training, I've got LVT courses on, I run them every week, every Monday to Wednesday, um, I've got numerous courses on in, in January, I've got very, very limited availability left for January, also do the steroids course, I've got my herringbone course, three day herringbone course as well now, so um, have a look on the website mmfloortraining.com for more details about course dates and availability. You seem to just keep rolling. Uh, you'll you'll do a course, do another, do another, and then start again. So yeah, I do a course a week really. Um, yeah. It's it's hard work getting people in every week, but we seem to be getting there. And the more the training centre is building up and building up a, a decent reputation, you know, people are coming in. Bookings are looking really good for January, and February. Um, so yeah, looking forward to next year and see what it what it brings. How have you found this year? Because there was a lot of in the media and things saying oh it's going to be a tough year uh, I've personally I've found it it's been busy this year yeah I think all fitters have been really busy this year which is great you know, want them to be out earning loads of money um, summer was really quiet for me um, I kind of knew it would be you know people are going on holiday um, kids are off school for six weeks you do well to tell your missus you're going to Wolverhampton for three days um, and leave <laughs> her at home with the kids um, so yeah, summer was a bit quiet, which is fine because I was going out doing a bit of fitting with yeah. floor layers. Um, but since then, it's really picked up, and next year is looking really good. I've got um, going to be doing some training for manufacturers next year. Um, I'm hopefully going to be going to South Africa and to France to deliver some training as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to next year and see what it brings. Yeah. Also already booked to be at Harrogate next year for the flooring show so I know the three of us love going to yeah. Harrogate on yeah. our busman's holiday <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that um, just see what happens with the year I never know what's going to happen with the training yeah. centre who's going to walk through the door or who's going to call me so um, usually with training centres they usually quiet off at the end of the year coming up to Christmas because mm. fitters it's busiest time of the year for me. how have you found the back end of this year have you been busy uh, yeah I've been as busy as I was last year to be honest um, which is good because obviously the climate's not great um, obviously with fuel prices going up and everything mortgages and everything going up in value uh, in cost sorry um, but at the same time you know I have a lot of carpet fitters coming here who've never done LVT and, you know if, you, yeah. if you're a carpet fitter and you're giving away LVT work all the time yeah. it doesn't really well, you, make business sense to you pass can it lose on your, so you can lose your carpet work by passing on the LVT this is it so a lot of carpet fitters are coming in here now to upskill and learn how to fit LVT obviously with it still being the quickest growing sector in the flooring industry yeah. um, you know people want to get involved and start fitting it which is you know one of the reasons I set this place up so are you not tempted to venture into other floor coverings or are you happy you're busy as you are on your on your own yeah well I'm kind of known for my LVT aren't I and that's sort of what yeah. I know um, so I kind of want to stick to that really because yeah. That, that is my passion and that is where all my knowledge lies. Um, if I start going down other routes of carpet and vinyl and stuff, I've got to get instructors in. Because uh, as you saw this morning, I can't fit carpet, I'm putting it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's the first bit of carpet you've had in here, in, it, in a bear. Yeah, Dan sometimes tries to bring carpet in, I usually throw him out with it, but um, there's too many of you here today, so I've, uh, I've, I've let you crack on. Um, but yeah, you'll be getting abusive text messages over oh, the yeah, next yeah. week when I'm moving. finding the fluff on Bits of fluff everywhere, yeah, <laughs> drive me mad. Um, but yeah, no, I just want to focus on, on LVT training. Um, I feel that the market is big enough for it, there's enough fitters out there to want to learn. And obviously you've got all the young blood coming into the industry yeah. as well. So but you get um, people back again, don't you? They come and do basics yeah, yeah. and they come back and they're doing yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. It's really rewarding training in 
you know, people coming on the Monday and they've never touched LVT, and on the Wednesday when they leave, they're scribing in herringbone to the wall and stuff. For rewarding, me, isn't it? Yeah, it really, really is. It really yeah. is. And to know that they're always <laughs> going to have them life skills and always fit to that standard, yeah. um, like you say, is really rewarding yeah. for me. I've worked with apprentices and done basic carpet courses, and they come in, never touch a carpet or never touch a carpet towel. A couple of days, they're doing more teeths in it and, and yeah, border work. It is re really rewarding. Yeah, I mean Paul from PDM Floors, who mentioned about his work earlier. You know, I trained Paul when I was at Car and Dean, and he's been on all my courses here. Um, <coughs> excuse me, and to see the progression in his work over the last three years, you know, I'd regard him as one of the best LVT fitters in the UK at the minute, just because of the design work he's doing, and yeah. he's got a lot of passion for his work. You know, and again for me, that's really rewarding to see how far he's come. From the training that, that I've given him, yeah. Um, but you know, it's not about me. It's, it, I can only show you what to do. Um, it's, you got to go and put it in practice. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's doing that, and it, it's great. So there's many, many fitters. I shouldn't just single out one, but there's many fitters that I've had in, and you know, to see the progression in the work is yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's just like all these photos we show of everyone else's work who they publicise their work. There's people out there that are doing work like that who don't put photos up, and they mm -hmm. they just go out and do it. So there is. A vast majority of people out there we've never heard of, and they they do amazing work. The thing is, you're missing a trick if you're not putting your work on social media because it's free advertising, it's free exposure. I know many fitters what are not it's, on social media, mad. and they're really good fitters. Yeah. Really I mean, I, good. I I'm not a big fan of Facebook and Instagram, and I'd much rather not have it in my life. But with work, I have to have it. If I didn't, I'd yeah. be I'd, you know I get a lot of work off Instagram, free advertising. Facebook, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'd say to all fitters. Your portfolio of work, your Instagram page, or your Facebook, you know, that's free advertising for yeah, you. Yeah, free advertising, why wouldn't, you, hands, yeah, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Um, and also, as well, just on that, when you put pictures of your work online, you only get three seconds to catch someone's attention. So, you want to be putting the best pictures of your work on first, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the rip ups and the prep at the end. Yeah. Uh, you see a lot of people yeah, some you, of the, you the other scroll way, through the work. carpets that are on first before and after yeah, yeah. you see it you, scro you have you to scroll through to find, yeah. find the good work yeah. you're better off putting the good picture on first and then the you know less appealing to the eye pictures on last yeah uh, LVT fitter of the year that, it's LVT this year uh, the entries are now open for anybody who wants to enter so uh, how do you think how do you think the competition is going to be this year? I know for a fact there's loads of entries, yeah. a lot more than the last LVT it's picking one. Picking up in it, now, yeah. Entries. Again, like I say, social media That's gives not. everyone a platform to, yeah. you know, showcase their work, but also it gives everyone else a kick up the arse to maybe up their game a little yeah. bit. Um, I'm hoping some of the lads I've had in want to enter yes. the competition because, again, for me that would be, I'd be really proud to uh, see them you know in the finals um, but yeah I wish everyone luck who, who enters um, it's not easy entering a flooring no. competition no. we fit our floors every day it's you know a big part of our life but when you're doing it under competition rules and there's people watching and you're there with the camera it's a completely different ball game um, if you enter the competition then, then you'd, you'd find out but um, yeah good luck to everyone who enters this year um, have, you, have you never like in the past been a, attempted to enter I entered the. Well, I was asked to enter the floor skills one a few years ago. Um, I wouldn't do it now because this training centre is not about me. It's about. You know, it's not about the fitters that come. It's about the fitters that leave on yeah. the Wednesday. So it ain't about me. I don't want to be better than everyone else. I want everyone else to be better. It's yeah, a big, yeah. big thing for me. That so to enter a flooring competition would really clash with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I'd be in, it'd be interested to see who enters this year because there is a lot of good LVT fitters out there. Oh, I'll be ringing around and giving them a, a kick up the arse to, to enter because you'll only better yourself from it. Well, the, the experience, Dan. Yeah, yeah. You, the, the working under pressure. There's, mm -hmm. It might not be nice when you're doing it, but you take away so much from being put yeah. under pressure. pushes you out of your comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. And you, it, you might not even realise it, but mm -hmm. you have. And also working around other top fitters in the UK in a competition. You Things can see what they're doing yeah. and yeah. tools they've got and you know and you go and there, you pieces. come home better than yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I put myself under a lot of pressure when I was in the competition at floor skills. Um and yeah, it dramatically increased my fitting and my um yeah, my skill set because of it. So it's always good to push yourself. You know, some people don't want to and they wanna not interested in competitions, the floor is just a job, but what, for other people they're a bit more involved in the industry and they want to better themselves and they want recognition for yeah. being, you know. There's good, good leads fitters. off that competition. 
keep that. You do get them. They're not all to do with hitting things and that, but yeah. there is entering that competition opens you up to a whole world of different again, things. You get to meet people you'd never met and manufacturers. You, it, as Great much as it does, isn't yeah, it? as much as it does for your fitting, I'd mm. say it does for your business. As but well. also as well, it goes down a treat on your social media. You know, if you're in flooring competitions and potential customers see that in a month time, yeah. exactly, or mm. in six months time or a year's time, yeah. it's all good it's exposure and it, yeah, adds yeah. prestige to you in your business. Which you know, you want to be better than the people around you. Um, entering competitions, and you know, hopefully you coming on a training yeah. course <laughs> will help you achieve that. Yeah. Right, that's it for training centres then. Um, right, next year we're launching our new competition, uh, fastest fitter in the West. So before before the flooring police starts issuing us with cautions and threatening to take our badge off us, it's just a bit of fun, uh, and there is standards and rules involved. Uh, we've we've prepped the bay out this morning, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. It's just a minimum minimum British standard install. Yeah, we've got all the grippy spacing right, mated all the doorways, done the door bar properly, reversed the runs of the underlay, so everything's done in accordance with British standards. Uh, there is rules involved, so you can't just come in and like hack it in. Uh, you, you, you know what I mean? It's got to be square. You've got to, you can't net it off a wall. Um, for every mill it's out, uh, five seconds is added onto your time, so you've got to make sure it's bang on square. Uh, stretch wise you've got to stretch the length before the width like British Standard says uh, pile towards the door uh, fit your doorway last so if you know your stretching pattern uh, you'll know that you stretch the doorway last uh, skirtings you cannot mark any skirtings you can cut it in and fit it however you want you can even use trimmers but if you mark the skirting uh, for every mark there's 10 seconds that goes on to your time at the end uh, also as well any manufacturers want to donate any carpet and sponsor this competition feel free and we'll uh, give you a, give you a, a good mention uh, right Dan so yeah, are you ready not really I don't want to do it but we're gonna have to anybody <laughs> want, wants to enter this we're going to do it uh, once a month on our monthly roundups and there'll be uh, like decent prizes to win as well so uh, right Dan no, get ready Right, Dan, time starts, hang on, hang on, no. So that's the first one with pilot Dan's piloted it. How uh, was it, Dan? Yeah, it's hard work, isn't it? It's <laughs> not something I want to be doing, it's slashing it in like that, but it's done. Uh, we've checked it's square, bang on square, there's no marks on the skirtings, I've had a good look. So your time, six minutes, 20 seconds. So people have easy beat that. So anybody, anybody wants, come and come down and have a go, a bit of fun, win, win some prizes. Uh, if you think you can beat six minutes, we've 20. already bagged a man. He's coming now. Yeah, we've got somebody else. <laughs> we've got our first one. So, yeah, right, Dan, we've got our first contestant here. Uh, we've got uh, Dave Taylor from Glasgow. All right, Dave. Hi. Yeah. So, do you reckon you can beat uh, Dan's six minutes twenty? Oh, I think I've got a good really. chance, eh? <laughs> uh, so he heard us. He's just been walking past and yeah, nipped into so his the first said, test. Let's go. <laughs> So right Dave, um, I'll set the timer, good luck yep. with it. Right, okay. So do. Have you got everything you need Dave? Yep. One second, let me get this up. The minimum of tools. <laughs> yeah. Bare minimum. Reset. Right Dave, off you go.
Three minutes forty. Dan, Ooh, just give it a check. Yeah, right. Ninety year old. Proper crooked. Proper crooked. It's an inch short. Proper crooked. 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 You've been beat. Yeah. Three metres forty. Well done, Dave. Cheers, bro. You're the winner Cheers, of the Dave. You're the man. Right, that's it for another year. Uh, what is it, uh, Dan? Six, seven, seven months we've been doing these roundups. Yeah, yeah. The, the we just like, yeah, I think we've done about seven, haven't we? <coughs> yeah, one. Like I say, next year we'll try and do one a month. Uh, well done on the old uh, fastest fitter there. So you had a bit of a sweat on. Yeah, and I didn't do it fast either. <laughs> <laughs> But the, these roundups, I think, are really good because it's just—it's like a, you know, a monthly newsletter if you want. Of yeah, what's just going what's on in the industry yeah. it gives people a bit of exposure, the nice work they're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, reading a newsletter is great, but watching it's a lot, you know, easier and more appealing to people. Yeah, I yeah, so yeah I think absolutely. It's good that you're doing these, giving your time up as well. Uh, you and you, both of you, you know, do a lot for the industry that goes on behind closed doors that people don't realise. You know, obviously yourself, you run UK Flooring TV, you've got your fitting company, the president yeah, yeah. of the NICF, you now as well, congratulations, on the board for writing the uh, British Standards. Yeah, we'll see brilliant. how that goes, see how yeah, that goes. That's great, and again, Dan, you know, you do a lot with Brian, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're doing your whipping and your binding and your, your fitting, so, um, yeah, you both do a lot for the industry, it's appreciated. And if any manufacturers want to give us any tools to give away, because uh, we don't we don't keep any, do no, we? We no, just no, give them away the to the viewers yeah. and that. Uh, Dan Evans, this year's winner of Cabin Fitter of the Year, he's give us this to raffle off. Uh, we've we've got all the names in. I've wrote them all down on a piece of paper, cut them all up, put them in this bucket here. One sec, and uh, we'll see if Paddy will do the draw. So give it a shake, Paddy, and pull the name out. Paddy McNicholas. If you can read the writing. Yeah, and the winner is Brian King. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Hutchinson. Well Nick, done, Nick. Nick Hutchinson. Well done, Nick. If you send us your details, I'll get Dan to post it out for you. So. <laughs> uh, also, the Fento knee pads, we've got two pairs to give away. We've said when we get up to 2,000 subscribers, we need like uh, 60 more. We'll we? I think we're 940 something, so not long to go. As soon as it gets yeah. to 2,000. Sign your granny up. So I can follow for more flooring videos, <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> So anyway, that, that's it for this year. Uh, hope you all have a good Christmas, good New Year, and uh, we'll see you in January. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas, everybody. Cheers.